Today's lesson is the hurricane effect. How Amanda Gorman is taking the world by storm. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our program. I'm Roger, and I'm Helen. And today we're going to talk about a new famous young person. No, she's not a rock and roll singer. No, she's not an actress. She's actually a poet laureate, at least a young one, the youth poet laureate of Los Angeles. And she's become famous because she recited some poetry at the inauguration of U.S. President Joe Biden. So yeah, because of her performance there, we have gotten to know about her talent as a poet. And hey, we can all be better people because of it. Yes, and since the inauguration ceremony, she has had a、uh, great success with her poetry. She has written books of poetry, and those books have enjoyed success. They have made bestseller lists following the inauguration. And the writer has also a lot of ambition for the future. She doesn't want to be just a writer. Not that there's anything wrong with being just a writer, but she has more ambitions for her future. She sees. Herself as doing great things, and in day two, we're going to talk about what some of these things are that Amanda Gorman would like to achieve. Okay, so let's find out what some things are that Amanda Gorman would like to achieve in the first part of our lesson. Let's listen. The writer and activist is inspiring younger generations to follow her lead. In 2016, Gorman founded One Pen One Page. A nonprofit organization that runs youth writing and leadership programs, Gorman hopes that by bringing her poetry into institutions and spaces usually reserved for people of a different demographic, she will set an example for children of color everywhere. It's my way of telling other young poets that they too have a voice and belong at every table imaginable," she said. 大家好，第一部分我们看到片语。Follow somebody's lead 表示效仿某人或是跟着某人做。例如 ，Lance decided to follow Mike's lead and take classes on the weekend. Lance 决定效仿 Mike 在周末上课。或是 ，Just follow my lead in serving the banquet guests tonight. It's not complicated. 今晚就听我的引导去招待宴会宾客，一点都不复杂。另外，补充两个包含 lead 的相关片语。第一是 lead up to something。表示时间临近某事，或是一连串事件导致点点点。举例来说 ，The days leading up to final exams were stressful for Luke. 对 Luke 来说，期末考前几天压力很大。或是 ，The preparations leading up to the wedding went smoothly. 婚礼的准备工作进行的很顺利。第二 ，lead by example， 表示以身作则。我们可以说。The manager leads by example and always puts in extra hours at the office. 经理以身作则，总是在公司多待几小时。再来，我们看到形容词 nonprofit， 意思是非盈利的，像是 the nonprofit organization provides help and support to the homeless. 那个非盈利机构提供游民协助和支援。接着，我们看到单字 imaginable， 这个字是形容词。指想象得到的，或是可想象的。例如 ，The library has books on practically every subject imaginable. 这间图书馆几乎有你所有想象得到的各种主题的书籍。或是 ，This massive store seems to have every product imaginable for sale. 这间大型商店看似有卖所有你想象得到的商品。So it says here the writer and activist we're talking about Amanda Gorman is inspiring younger generations to follow her lead. So she's not only writing and、uh, giving speeches, but she also wants to have some influence on other people, specifically young people, people like her. So here she is called not only a writer; she's an activist. An activist is somebody who works or fights for specific change in society or in politics, changes for the better. So she is also an activist, and she is inspiring younger generations to follow her lead. 
Inspiring here means to give someone the enthusiasm and the hope to do something or to create something good. So, for instance, I might say, looking at the beautiful paintings in the museum has inspired me to take up painting. So, the paintings in the museum gave me the feeling to do something great, to paint myself. Right. So she's a writer. She's an activist, and because of the things she has done, she has inspired younger generations. Of people to follow her lead. Hey, if she can do that, I want to do that too. It sounds pretty cool to be a poet. And in the year 2016, Gorman founded One Pen One Page, a nonprofit organization that runs youth writing and leadership programs. So yes, because she's so good, and because she has been awarded the Youth Poet Laureate distinction there, back in 2016, which is already over five years ago, she founded an organization called One Pen. One page. I guess that's all it takes if you want to write something. All you need is one pen and one page of paper. And this particular organization is a nonprofit organization, which means it's there to help society. It's not there to make money. And they try to help youth or young people. It、uh, helps run youth writing and leadership programs. So yeah, it tries to inspire young people to write just like her. Right, and by doing this, by starting this nonprofit organization, she is hoping to get people to follow her lead. So to follow her lead means to act in a manner similar to someone else. In this case, to her. So I could say, for instance, Jack followed his father's lead and became a doctor. So in any case, Gorman found. Founded one pen one page, which is a nonprofit organization that inspires youths to do great things, to write and to become leaders in society. Basically, to follow Gorman's lead, and Gorman hopes that by bringing her poetry into institutions and spaces usually reserved for people of a different demographic, she will set an example for children of color everywhere. Right, so an institution is some kind of organization or some kind of society or something that people are members of, and she wants to bring her poetry into different kinds of institutions, which could be universities or nonprofit organizations or whatever. And she also wants to bring her poetry into spaces that are usually reserved for people of a different demographic. Okay, so spaces、uh, could. You know, include、uh, you know, giving speeches or presentations in libraries or whatever at city hall, and of course, sometimes these places are reserved for people of a different. Demographic. If we talk about demographics, we talk about the qualities of people in a certain country and in the population.、Uh, it could be in terms of race, it could be in terms of age or physical abilities or disabilities. So yeah, those are demographics here. And yeah, I guess usually we hear poetry from a certain segment of the population. And here she's trying to get other people involved, people of different backgrounds. That's right. So. To- To put it quite simply, when we think about poets, poets in America, we don't think about black poets because there aren't that many that are famous. Most poets in America are white or they're of European descent. And Amanda Gorman wants to open up the field of poetry to a different demographic, which means allowing people of color access to being heard and also giving them the chance to learn how to write poetry or to develop their talent. As poets, as artists, and this starts when the people are young, when they're children. So she hopes that this nonprofit organization will benefit children of color everywhere. Children of color, of course, meaning children who aren't white. So they could be. Black children, Hispanic children, Asians—these are all people of color. Exactly. So she's trying to be an inspiration for all those people. And here's what she says: It's my way of telling other young poets that they too have a voice and belong at every table imaginable. That's what she said. So if you have a voice, that means you're saying something, and people are listening to you. You matter, basically. And、uh, she's saying that、uh, these people can belong at every table. 
that you can imagine. We're not necessarily referring to someone's dinner table that they would actually invite you over for dinner, but basically it's referring to being in any kind of situation with different kinds of people. And yes, lots of people don't have a voice, and now they will. Okay, that brings us to the end of the first part of our lesson for today. Let's continue with the second part now. Gorman's growing visibility is also amplifying her efforts to fight for civil rights and put an end to oppression. As a black woman, she is deeply aware of the effects of gender and racial discrimination and seeks to bring about social transformation through her work. Poetry and language are often at the heartbeat of movements for change, Gorman said. Her long-term political goals include campaigning for president in 2036, the first year she'll be eligible. 第二部分，我们看到名词 visibility， 指关注程度或是能见度。像是 restaurants can get a lot of visibility when famous people visit them。如果有名人来访，餐厅就能获得许多关注。或是 visibility was very poor because of the fog。因为有雾，能见度很差。再来，我们看到单字 amplify 这个字是动词，指扩大或是增强。例如 ，the large empty room amplified the sound of Harold's saxophone。空荡的大房间放大了 Harold 吹萨克斯风的声音。或是 Phil's passion for art was amplified after he visited an art gallery in Paris。Phil 参观巴黎的一间艺廊后，对艺术的热情更强烈了。最后，我们看到形容词 eligible， 指具备资格、条件的或是合格的。我们可以说 Martin is eligible for a scholarship this semester. Martin 这个学期有资格申请奖学金。或是 Only local residents are eligible to enter the competition. 只有当地居民有资格参加这场比赛。另外，补充一个同义形容词 qualified, Q U A L I F I E D, qualified. 指符合资格的或是合格的，像是 Joan is a qualified nurse, so I always feel safe when she's around. Joan 是名合格的护士，所以有她在，我总是感到很安心。So let's continue talking about Amanda Gorman and what she has done beyond writing poetry. Gorman's growing visibility is also amplifying her efforts to fight for civil rights and put an end to oppression. So the fact that Gorman is becoming more visible, her growing visibility, which means that she is becoming more and more noticed by the public, this situation is also amplifying her efforts to fight for civil rights. Here, the word "amplify" means to emphasize or to make clear or to make bigger. So her efforts before she was. Was famous may have been very strong, but nobody really noticed it. Now that she has developed more visibility, her efforts have also been amplified, so they are noticed by more and more people. So, what are her efforts? They are to fight for civil rights and to put an end to oppression. So, when we talk about civil rights, we're talking about the rights of citizens, of everyday people. But in the context of the United States, civil rights also more specifically means the right. Rights of minorities. Civil rights were first fought by minorities, especially African Americans, Black people, starting in the 1950s and 1960s with Martin Luther King. So, when we talk about civil rights in this context, we're talking about that historical moment. Right, and she wants to stop or put an end to oppression. Oppression is just. Uh, unfair treatment of somebody over a long period of time, and it's usually cruel and unfair, and people suffer as a result. So she wants to stop that. She wants to put an end. To oppression, and as a black woman, she is deeply aware of the effects of gender and racial discrimination, and seeks to bring about social transformation through her work. So she's black, and she's also a woman. So she knows how each of those demographics suffer. From oppression, okay, because she's a black woman, she is aware of the effects of gender discrimination and racial discrimination. So she wants to bring about 
some social change. Transformation is just a big change, and yes, she's trying to change society for the better, especially for. Oppressed people, right? So, as Roger said, transformation is a change. It's a complete change, or it can also refer to the process of that change. So, I could say, for instance, I went on a diet. I lost fifteen pounds, and when people saw me, they couldn't believe my transformation. How different I looked. So, here we're talking about social transformation, which is a change in society, and it's a change for the better. Right. I remember when I used to go to Dodge、uh, here in Taipei. It used to be kind of an open countryside there, but now it's all big apartment buildings. It has gone through a big transformation. It has changed a lot, as、uh, can be said about lots of parts of Taiwan, as more and more buildings are built. And、uh, here's what it says next. It says poetry and language are often at the heartbeat of movements for change. That's what Gorman said. Of course, if you're writing poetry and if you're speaking, well, these things are at the heartbeat of movements for change. Now, heartbeat here just refers to your heart beating in your chest, but we could also say she's talking about the foundation of movements, the basis for these movements. They all start from the heart. Yeah, like the life force of these movements or the inspiration. So she is actually speaking like a poet. She's using a lot of symbolism, a lot of metaphors. She's very, very eloquent, and so she's talking about poetry being the inspiration or the foundation of social change. And that's what Gorman said. And her long-term political goals include campaigning for president in 2036, the first year she'll be eligible. Okay, so if you campaign for something, that means you have a series of events in order to achieve some kind of goal. To campaign, you could be campaigning for peace. You could be campaigning for human rights or whatever. So in this particular case, she's running for president. She plans to run for president or campaign for president in the year 2036. But she's still quite young. I believe she won't be eligible until. She's a certain age. Now, if you're eligible, that means you're qualified to do something. Okay. A lot of times in society, you know, maybe boys are kind of frustrated that they can't find a girlfriend. Oh, there just aren't enough eligible ladies around. There just aren't enough ladies available. They're all married, or they all have boyfriends. There are no eligible ladies out there. And in this particular case, though, she wants to be the president. She wants to run for president, but I guess she's too young. She's not eligible yet. Yes, you need to be a certain age to be president. You can't be too young, so you need to reach that age in order to become eligible to be president. And、uh, I could also say that in America, you need to be at least sixty-five years old to be eligible for Social Security government benefits. That was the age, the eligible age. Ah,、uh, yeah. I hope they don't raise it, because by the time I get to be that age, I don't think I'll have enough money to pay for my health insurance. So, indeed, hopefully, I'll be eligible for Social Security or Medicaid or whatever the case might be. So, yes, she'll be eligible for president in 2036. We wish her the best of luck. Let's move on now to the third and final portion of our lesson. We will listen to it first. Whatever project Gorman has in store next, it's certain we haven't seen the last of her. I'm learning that I am not lightning that strikes once, the poet said. I am the hurricane that comes every single year. Whatever project Gorman has in store next, it's certain we haven't seen the last of her. So she has accomplished so much in her young age. She's only 23 years old. She has done so much. So we're pretty sure that nothing is going to stop her from achieving more. And it doesn't matter what she decides to do in life. Whatever project Gorman has in store, to have something in store means to have something waiting or prepared for oneself. Or for her others, so no matter what she has in store next, it's certain that we haven't seen the last of her. She will be doing more great things, writing poetry, giving speeches, or working to improve society. Exactly. So here's what she says to finish things off. She says, 
I'm learning that I am not lightning that strikes once. That's what the poet said. I am the hurricane that comes every single year. And indeed, at least in North America, we do seem to have hurricanes every year. Here in Taiwan, we tend to have two or three typhoons every year. But yeah, lightning usually just strikes once. That's not me. I don't just strike once. I'm going to be like a big hurricane that comes back every single year. And yeah, I guess we're looking forward to hearing from her again. That's right. She is quite impressive, and、uh, if you have the chance, then listen to her speech at the inauguration ceremony. It's very beautiful, and you will definitely get a lot from it. Very inspiring indeed, and I'm sure there are YouTube videos for you to watch. You can just click on it right now while we're speaking. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. Here comes our Chinese teacher. Hello, 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文第二部分的第一句提到 ，Amanda Gorman 日渐增加的能见度。强化了他争取公民权和终结压迫的努力。好，文中用到 put an end to oppression， 这表示终结压迫的意思。当我们用 put an end to something， 或者是 bring an end to something， 就是表达终止什么、终结什么，为某事物来画下句点。那我们也可以用 put a stop to something， 或者是 bring something to a stop。Bring something to a close. Bring something to a halt. 等等，来表达差不多的语义。另外，补充一下两个意思相近的用语哦。一个叫做 put the brakes on something. Brake, b r a k e， 这是指刹车嘛？那从字面上来看，这个用语就是说对什么来踩刹车。引申用来表达停止进行某事，使某事停顿、停摆的意思。好，那另外一个补充的是。Put the kibosh on something. Kibosh, 它是拼作 k i b o s h， 在这边它是指阻碍的因素。所以，我们当我们说 put the kibosh on something， 就是表达停止、阻碍，要让某事物，尤其是某个计划、想法等等无法继续。好，那我们看到课文句子里面有用到一个单词叫 oppression, o p p r e s s i o n。好，它是表达压迫、欺压的意思。那它是来自动词 oppress。好，我们来学它的字首字根哦。好，看到 press, p r e s s 这个字根，它就有挤压或者是推的意思。那么在 oppress 这个字当中，它的字首 o p 是来自 o b， 表示对抗或是反向，然后 press 表示压。当你把某一股势力反向压回去，应该很容易联想到 oppress， 它有压迫、压制的意思吧？好，我们顺便补充几个有相同字根的单字。第一个是 compress，c o m p r e s s， 它的字首 c o m 表示完全啊，或者是一起。Press 表示挤压，把所有东西全部一起挤压，把它挤压在一起，应该可以联想到 compress， 它有压缩、压紧的意思。如果我们在字尾加上 o r 变成 compressor， 就可以表达压缩机的意思哦。第二个补充的是 depress，d e p r e s s。好，它的字首 d e 表示 down 往下。Press 表示压迫。那同学们试着想，我们在背很重的东西时，那个东西不就是会把我们身体往下压吗？让我们感到很沉重啊。同样的，如果是负面的情绪啊、压力这些东西压住我们，心情就会很沮丧，让人意志消沉。所以呢 ，depress 这个动词就可以表达使什么沮丧、消沉的意思。第三个是 express， 就是表达的那个字，它的字首 e x 表示由内向外 ，press 表示推。当你把内心的想法、感受、情绪啊向外推出去、向外展露，那就可以联想到 express， 它有表达、表露的意思喽。那么第四个 impress。就是使什么印象深刻那个意思。好，它的字首 i m 是来自 i n， 它带有这种 in 啊、into 或是 on 的意思，就是表达在什么之中，进入或是在什么上方。那么 press 表示压，把某人或某事物你重重的压进你心里面，应该可以联想到 impress 有使什么铭记、使什么留下印象的意思喽。好，那以上是今天重点整理，我们来回顾今天单字吧。Inspire. My father inspired me to work hard and focus on self-improvement. Nonprofit. 
Richard works for a nonprofit organization that provides aid to refugees. Institution. These laws are designed to regulate banks and other financial institutions. Amplify. The scientists amplified their efforts to find a cure for the virus after it began spreading. Transformation. The transformation of this neighborhood has caused house prices to soar. Campaign. After seeing the failures of the local government, Rob decided to campaign for mayor. Eligible. Many eligible voters choose not to cast their vote. Discussion starter starts now. Okay, we've got a discussion starter for you today, and the question is: What did you find most inspiring about Amanda Gorman? Why did you find that thing particularly inspiring? Well, what inspired me the most about Amanda Gorman was the fact that she grew up in a single parent family. She was raised by a single mother, and、um, a lot of people complain that they didn't have the upbringing to allow them to achieve greatness. But sometimes it just takes a lot of hard work and determination, and not blaming other people for stopping you from what you want to achieve.、Mm -hmm. Well, I thought it was particularly inspiring that. Amanda Gorman is a poet, because、uh, usually you don't hear about famous poets. I mean, you do if you go to school and if you study literature and stuff like that. But as part of mainstream society, we don't really hear from poets all that much. So it's very inspirational that she has started to read her poetry aloud, and that has inspired me to hear more poetry. Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of our program, and please make sure you join us again next time. From all of us here, I am Roger. I'm Helen. See, See you, you next time. time.